Hi, and welcome back to the shop. I'm calling this project a modern sideboard. You could also call it a buffet, kind of the same thing. It's a veneer project, and I veneered the top and sides with highly figured Clara walnut and the face of the cabinet with quarter cut walnut. I think it looks great in walnut, but you could also veneer this in white oak or really whatever species appeals to you. If you'd like to build this piece of furniture, I'll have a link to the step-by-step -step plans right here and down in the description below. Now let's go ahead and get to work. Support for this project is provided by SAS Door Hardware, maker of the invisible hinge. SAS, strong, beautiful, invisible. Learn more about SAS Door Hardware at SAS.com. I'll have a link in the description below. And GL Veneer. Visit GL Veneer and check out their wide selection of wood veneers, custom plywood, and live edge slabs. Click on the link in the description below and learn more about GL Veneer at glveneer.com. Like most cabinet projects, this one starts by building a box. And I'll get started by cutting the parts for the box to size. I'll start with a full sheet and break it down. The first rip I like to make a little bit heavy, generally an eighth inch to a quarter inch heavy. And once the parts are smaller and easier to handle when I'm pushing them through the table saw, I'll then flip them over and cut them to their exact width. Once the parts are cut to width, I'll break out the crosscut sled and cut the parts to length. The next step is to measure and mark where I'll need to pre-drill and countersink holes for the screws. I'll pre-drill and countersink holes 2 inches from the edge on each side and one in the center. With the holes pre-drilled and countersunk, I'm ready to assemble the cabinet. I'll use a little wood glue and I'm going to tack the parts in position first with an inch and a quarter nail. That'll keep the parts from moving around. I can keep them nice and flush at the sides and at the top. And then I'll use inch and three quarter screws for a good strong connection. When I attach the two pieces of plywood in the center of the cabinet, I'll use 3 8 shims to help lift those pieces of plywood up so it's easy to attach the plywood flush at the front or face of the cabinet. The two pieces at the center of the cabinet are set in at the back 3 8 of an inch to allow for the back of the cabinet. Now I'm ready to attach the other side of the cabinet and if you look closely you can see the 3 8 shims that are under the two pieces of plywood at the center of the cabinet. This is the main part of the cabinet and now that it's assembled I'll rip strips of solid walnut at a quarter of an inch to band the plywood edge at the front and back of the cabinet. When I'm making the quarter inch molding I'll set the fence at 5 16 of an inch, and that gives me a little room to remove the blade marks with the drum sander on each side. When I trim the front of the cabinet, I'll use miter joints and picture frame the outside of the cabinet.
Once the outside of the cabinet is trimmed, I'll apply the molding to the dividers on the inside using butt joints. The same trim will be applied to the back of the cabinet, but only to the outside, not to the dividers in the center. Here's a look at the back of the cabinet. You can see that the center dividers are not trimmed with the solid walnut molding and that they're set in 3 eighths of an inch and that's to allow for the back of the cabinet. The next step on this project is to make the 3 quarter by inch and a quarter molding that will picture frame the side cabinets. That same molding is attached at the bottom and the top of the center cabinet flush with the cabinet dividers. I'm making the molding out of white oak simply because I have some white oak in the shop and it's a pretty close color match to birch plywood. I made this simple jig to draw a line so when the molding is attached at the line the back of the molding will be flush with the back of the cabinet dividers and when the back of the cabinet is attached it will have the same reveal all the way around. With the molding attached at the back of the cabinet, the next step is to get to work on the wooden frames that the drawers will slide on. I'm making the frames out of poplar and the first step is to cut the boards to a rough length. With all the parts for the frames ripped at 2 inches, I'll set up a stop block and cross cut four of them at 16 and a half. After readjusting the stop block, I'll cut the next four at 16. With the parts for the frames cut to size, the next step is to drill the pocket holes for the pocket hole screws. Here's one of the frames that I've already assembled using the pocket hole screws. So we'll go ahead and build another one and I'll just show you a few of the steps. So number one, you want to drill the holes that you'll need to attach the frame to the cabinet before you assemble the frame. So I'll measure in three and a half inches on each side and use the drill press to pre-drill and countersink these holes. I actually couldn't drill deep enough to countersink the hole with the drill press, so I've got a longer bit in the drill. The hole with the drill press will keep this hole nice and straight, or this bit nice and straight, and I'll countersink this hole just a little bit. Now I'll use a little wood glue. Make sure the countersink holes are facing the inside of the frame and assemble the frame. To help position the frame, I'm using pieces of quarter inch plywood. This is just scrap plywood. And I've ripped it at eight inches for this bottom frame. And that fits in there. The, the plywood's a little bit bowed, that's why I have some room here. I'll clamp this together 
and then attach the frame to the side of the plywood with two and a half inch screws. I'll make sure that I'm flush at the back and tight at the bottom and then drive the screws home. Now I'm taking out the spacers and I'll rip them at seven inches. Okay, well now that I have the drawer frames installed, I'll get to work on the doors. And for this project, I'm using the SAS 204 hinge. That'll give the cabinet a very clean, modern look since the hinge is invisible. To install this hinge, it needs to be mortised into what I'm referring to as either the hinge board or the style. And I'll get started by making them on the table saw. The hinge board is made of solid walnut and I'll rip it at one and one eighth of an inch. The next step in this project is to hang the doors. These doors are made out of three quarter inch birch plywood that are veneered with quarter cut walnut. You could also make the doors just out of three quarter inch walnut plywood, really whatever's easiest for you or whatever you have in the shop. I happen to have the three quarter inch birch plywood and the veneer, so that's why I went that route. I'm gonna hang these doors with the SAS 204 hinge and that's going to give the cabinet a very clean modern look and I found the easiest way to hang a door using this hinge is to first rip your style to width then cross cut or square up one end and then bring it over to the cabinet mark it and cut it to length. Now I'm going to hold the square end against the bottom of the cabinet, use a sharp pencil, and mark a line on the back. You really want to get a good fit on this cut, so it might be a good idea to leave the line and then just slowly sneak up on it. I know that's probably a little heavy still, so I'm going to put the saw blade down, push the material into the blade, pick it back up, and trim it by just a little bit. You see how the blade is hitting it? And that looks good. It's a nice, tight fit. Now I have both styles cut, everything is labeled, I've got the doors cut to length, but before I mortise the hinges, I'm going to edge band the hinge side of the door to cover the plywood. I'll apply the edge banding with a hot clothes iron and cut the ends flush with a sharp razor blade. To cut the mortise for the SAS 204 hinge, you'll use a plunge router. I've already preset the depths for the plunge router. The first is for the shallow mortise. After I cut the shallow mortise, I'll spin this 
depth adjustment. And this will be for the deep mortise. So just take some time. Before I started working on this, I did a few test pieces. I know that this is all set to go, so I'm ready to cut the mortises or the hinge. When I cut the shallow mortise, I'll remove the set screws. When I'm cutting this side, I make sure that the jig is facing the tape and I'll push down the stop. Slide that into position and clamp it in place. Everything's all set. The jig is clamped in position with the stop at the end of the block. The set screws are removed and now I'll cut the shallow mortise. After cutting the shallow mortise, I'll replace the set screws and adjust the depth of the plunge router to cut the deep mortise. After cutting the deep mortise, I'll repeat the process on the other side of the hinge board and then move on to the doors. To mortise the doors, I've made this jig so I can clamp the doors in this position with two squeeze clamps on either side. And then I'll use my jig on this side of the door. I'll put that clip down. And I'll clamp it in place with a squeeze clamp on each side. With the shallow mortise cut, again, I'll replace the set screws and cut the deep mortise. With the mortises cut in the styles and the doors, I'll use the hinge as a guide to pre-drill and tap holes for the screws. The self-centering drill bit that I'm using here is also known as a VIX bit. Once the holes are drilled, I'll drive the screws being careful not to strip or break them. With the styles finished, I'll repeat the process on the doors. Before I can attach the styles to the cabinet, I'll need to pre-drill and countersink holes for the screws. And you'll notice that I'm drilling the holes a little bit off-center, more towards the inside of the cabinet. When I attach the styles, I'll use an eighth inch shim to make sure they're attached in the correct position. Now that I have the styles attached to the inside of the cabinet, I'm going to trim off an eighth of an inch from the top and bottom of the door so the door will fit into the cabinet. An eighth of an inch sounds a little bit heavy, but remember I need to band the edge with the edge banding so that'll bring me up 
a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch. Since I'm cutting across the grain, I'll use a little painter's tape to help prevent any tear out. After cross cutting the doors to length, I also ripped them to fit with a 5 degree angle facing towards the inside of the cabinet. Here's one of the doors finished and ready to hang on the cabinet. And I'm going to install the hinges on the door first. And next I'll hang the door on the hinge board. With the doors finished, I'm just about ready to move on to the drawers, but before I do, I'm going to add a small piece of molding on either side of the drawer frames and at the bottom of the cabinet, and that'll create enough room around the drawer box for drawer front. I'll make the filler out of three quarter inch poplar and rip the pieces at a quarter of an inch. After squaring up one side, I'll set up a stop block and cut them all to length. I'll attach the fillers to the side of the cabinet with a little wood glue and three quarter inch nails. I'm building the drawers out of 5 8 Baltic birch plywood and I'll get started by ripping the parts to width. Next, I'll set up a stop block and cut all the drawer sides to length. To get the length measurement of the front and back of the drawer box, I'll double up two of the drawer sides and push them against the filler on one side of the cabinet. Then I'll take a measurement from the drawer sides to the opposite filler. I'll subtract a sixteenth of an inch and that'll be the measurement for the front and back of the drawer box. I'm using a 3 8 dado stack to cut the groove for the drawer bottoms. When I cut the groove, I'll make one pass on a piece of 5 8 Baltic birch scrap and one pass on all the drawer fronts and sides. After making one pass on all the drawer fronts and sides, I'll adjust the fence and cut the groove on a piece of scrap wood until I have a good fit on the half inch plywood drawer bottom. Once I've got a good fit on the scrap piece, I'll finish cutting the groove on all the drawer sides and drawer fronts. After making the last pass on all the drawer fronts and sides, I'll raise the blade and cut the bottom off of all the drawer backs. With all the drawer parts made, I'll measure a mark to pre-drill and countersink holes for the screws. After cutting the drawer bottoms to size, I'm ready to assemble the drawers. Just like when I built the cabinet, I'll tack the parts in position first using a 23 gauge pin nailer. 
and then inch and a quarter screws for a stronger connection. Pre-drilling for the screws will help prevent the screws from breaking and the plywood from splitting. With the drawer box assembled, I'll apply a bead of glue at the groove in the drawer front and drop the drawer bottom into place. I'll use the nail gun to tack the bottom to the drawer back and hold it in position, and then use three evenly spaced screws for a stronger connection. To add a little more strength to the drawer and prevent the drawer bottom from potentially rattling, I like to add a bead of hot glue at the bottom of the drawer. The next step is to make the drawer fronts. I'm making the drawer fronts out of 3 quarter inch birch plywood and I'll get started by cutting them to size. Next, I'll make quarter by three quarter inch walnut molding to band the edge. I'll attach the molding to the edge of the drawer fronts with wood glue and one inch nails in the pin nailer. Now I'm ready to veneer the drawer fronts. I want to have a continuous grain match flow up the drawers, so I'll be careful to lay out and label the parts before making the cuts. I'll cut the veneer about a half of an inch heavy and trim off the quarter inch overhang later with a flush cut bit in the router. With the drawer fronts veneered, the next step is to attach the drawer fronts to the drawers and then the hardware to the drawer fronts and the doors. But before we get to that, I want to give you an abbreviated version of how I veneered the cabinet. I did post a full length version, I think it's 19 minutes long, that goes over every step that it takes to veneer the cabinet, and I'll have a link to that video right here. So the first step is to purchase the veneer. This veneer was provided by GL Veneer, and I'll have a link to GL Veneer down in the description below and they are one of the sponsors for this project. I've been using veneer from GL Veneer for years. So the veneer will come in a box. You'll take it out of the box, unroll it. If you can do it the night before, that's better because you can kind of weight it down and take some of the, the curl out of it. And then you're going to cut the veneer to size 
And I like to cut it either a half inch or maybe three quarters of an inch heavy, just enough to have a little overhang all the way around the cabinet. After you cut your veneer, being careful for grain match and making sure you have the best possible grain match, then you're going to veneer the cabinet sides first. We'll veneer the sides one at a time. After you apply the veneer, you'll trim the veneer with a flush cut bit in the router. Then do the other side. Once both sides are done, then you'll veneer the top. I always like to apply two coats of the contact cement to both the cabinet and the back of the veneer. I feel like the first coat absorbs right into the cabinet and the veneer and you don't really, it doesn't feel like it's gonna get a good bond. So that second coat, I think gives you a really good bond. That's the process that I've been using for more than 20 years and I've never had a problem with delamination. So it's really pretty simple, just take your time Watch the full length video, I would suggest that. And also practice on a few pieces of scrap plywood that you have hanging around the shop. Maybe even make a little decorative box first. This veneer is highly figured Claro Walnut on the sides and top of the cabinet. The front of the cabinet has quarter cut Walnut and you can see that I've matched the grain so it runs up the front of the drawers. So just take your time. It's one of those things, measure twice, cut once. Now let's go ahead and get to work on the drawer fronts. To attach the drawer fronts, I'll start by making a jig out of a piece of scrap plywood cut at the same length as the drawer fronts. I'll measure in 3 inches on each side and drill a hole in the center using the drill press so the hole is nice and straight. Next I'll center the jig on the drawer front, clamp it in place and drill through the drawer fronts. I'll repeat the process on all three drawer fronts and then move on to the drawer boxes, pre-drilling and countersinking holes from the inside of the drawer box through the front. Using a piece of scrap wood, I'll mark a location point for each hole. Next I'll put all the drawers in the cabinet and attach a temporary stop block at the back so I can apply pressure with the drill. I'll place the bottom drawer front on top of an eighth inch shim and attach the drawer front by screwing through the hole created for the drawer pull. With the drawer fronts now in the correct position, I'll attach them with inch and a quarter screws. Using the holes created for the drawer pulls as a guide, I'll drill through the drawer box to attach the drawer knobs. I'm attaching the doorknobs level with the center drawer pull and I'll use a simple jig clamped in position to make sure that I drill the hole straight. Okay, well, 
Now that we've got the doors hung, the drawer fronts installed, the hardware installed, the cabinets really coming together, the next step is the solid walnut base, and I'll get started on that right now. The base of the cabinet is made up of four parts, two feet and two stretchers. The feet are made of eight quarter walnut, and I'll get started on them by gluing up some boards. After allowing the glue to dry, I'll run the boards through the sander, then cut them to their final width on the table saw, then set up a stop block and cut them to length. The stretchers are made of five quarter walnut and I'll get started on them by ripping two boards at four inches. After cross cutting the boards to length, I'll get set up to cut the lap joints. I've got a flat tooth blade in the saw and I'll cut the lap joints in the stretchers first. The flat tooth blade will eliminate any grooves at the bottom of the joint. Next, I'll cut the lap joints in the feet to accept the stretchers. I have a detailed video explaining how to cut perfect lap joints on my channel, and I'll put a link to it in the upper right hand corner. The next step is to make a jig to cut the curve at the bottom of the stretchers. I'll start by ripping a piece of half inch MDF at 5 inches. Then I'll rip a thinner piece that I can bend in the shape of the curve. I'll clamp the thin piece flush in the center of the larger piece with a slight curve towards the end and clamp it in place. I'll attach the thinner piece that makes the curve with a few pin nails, making sure the reveal is the same on both sides. Then I'll add a few beads of hot glue for a little more strength. Now I can make the rough cut on the bandsaw and then use a flush cut bit in the router to create a perfect clean edge. Now I can remove the thinner piece and scrape away the hot glue with the chisel.
Adding a back to the jig will help with the placement on the workpiece. Now I can trace the curve and make a rough cut leaving the line with the bandsaw. With the jig clamped in place, I'll clean up the cut using a flush cut bit in the router. Next, I'll pre-drill and countersink holes to connect the stretchers to the feet. The base will be connected to the cabinet with four pocket screws and the holes will be drilled on the inside of the stretchers. I'll use one of the doorknobs to trace a bull nose shape at the end of the stretchers and I'll use a hand plane to cut the shape. Before assembling the base, I'll add a small chamfer at the front and bottom of the feet and give all the parts a good sanding. After assembling the base and sanding all the parts, I'll finish the cabinet with three coats of lacquer sanding in between coats with 320 sandpaper. I'll attach the base with a 3 quarter inch setback at the front of the cabinet and an inch and a half at the back. This will allow the cabinet to go over the baseboard and get a little closer to the wall. Okay, well here we are up in the art studio, which means the cabinet is finished. And if you stuck around this long, I want to thank you. I know this was a long project. It's pretty involved. For me, it was a real exercise in discipline. So many little steps and they all need to be done in the order, order that they need to be done in for everything to work out. But that's woodworking. It really is an exercise in discipline and patience, especially for me. I really do have to work myself through certain parts of the project. A couple of things that I did off camera. Number one, I did apply it back to the cap, the cabinet. I keep saying camera. So I've got half inch plywood on the back. I like to use half inch plywood for the backs. It's just that much more substantial. Quarter inch plywood feels a little wimpy, especially today. Quarter inch plywood is, is less than a quarter of an inch. So the half inch plywood doesn't cost that much more money. And I think it just adds a lot to the cabinet. It just makes it feel more robust. Also, I did use or I did add adjustable shelves to each cabinet. So there's one shelf in each cabinet that's made out of three quarter inch plywood with the iron on edge banding. And other than that, everything is pretty much covered on the video. If you want to build this, there are professional plans on my website. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll try to make a follow up video on this project because it was so involved, but really happy with the way it turned out. I like the combination of the highly figured Claro walnut on the top and sides and the quarter cut walnut. I think it just gives it a nice, clean, sharp look. 
And I'm happy to have another piece of furniture added to kind of this collection of furniture builds that, that I have on my channel and now on my website. And maybe someday I'll put together uh, a little book of all the furniture builds. Something I keep thinking about eventually, maybe 2024. So again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.